It is a new day here at the marina. We've just walked in after leaving the bridge deck to have glassed since yesterday. Gave it a little check and everything seems to be doing great. So now we're going to work on the underside, getting it glassed from that. But there's a few steps we need to take first before we can start that process. Be able to take that thing off. Yeah, it's after I think it ended up being six, seven hours or something like that of sanding this stuff down with the sander over my head, vacuum going, all the noise, everything like that. I'm so thankful that we chose this kit with these gel coated panels um, versus going with any of the other things that we're looking at with the flat panels that we'd be down at spending months fairing. My arms are exhausted. Um, so one of the things you'll notice too is how thick the gel coat is underneath here. Uh, the reason for that is it's thicker than what you normally have on a boat, but with the process that we're going through, we know we're going to be hitting into things, we're moving things around, all that kind of stuff. So when they spray down the gel coat, they actually went a little bit thicker than what you normally do. What we'll end up doing when it's time to launch the boat or when just the last thing that we do, we'll go through and we'll cut this down. So we'll, we'll uh, either wet sand it, go through and polish it all out, compound it and polish it down and bring it to the proper thickness. So the process now is to go through and fill these voids. Um, we had success from pushing it from the top side and then pushing that gap together. It squeezed through in roughly yeah, about 50% of it. They ended up squeezing all the way through and was very successful, but there are voids along this area. And so the process right now is gonna be kind of going through and filling those things in. And this time we're gonna wait for it to actually gel over. Unlike last time, we got a little hurried and we ended up having that bubble because of that, that one spot. So we will wait for it to gel over and then we can start applying the cloth. As you can tell, way up in the corner or the top of our tent, we have this amazing propane heating system, which has come in so handy, especially when we're doing things on top of the deck here because it keeps it all nice and heated. But once we go down below, there is nothing to heat it. And so as we're working under the boat here where the heat does not come, and it was 57 degrees as we got in today, we need to add a little oomph. Yeah. washing their bottoms. Uh, but here inside the tent, Matt has just finished using filler with the resin to kind of get the gaps all filled up. And we've given it just a bit of time with that heater to let that start curing. And what's going to happen now is we're going to mix up just straight resin without any kind of filler or hardener. And we're gonna roll that on, give it a few seconds. And then after that point, Matt is going to start adhering the biaxal fiberglass to it. I'm just probably gonna keep going like this, walking behind with it so it's not falling to the ground. But yeah, we're gonna work together and hopefully just get those two layers on, get it smoothed out, and then let the heat sit and have it cure overnight.
Well, I don't know if you can see from this angle, but uh, it actually turned out really, really well. We were able to squeegee all the extra resin out of there. So it is actually probably a pretty good ratio. It's still a little resin rich, but it's not too bad. Um, yeah, our only real mishap was this where we kicked over, well, I kicked over the whole pot of resin and spilled out probably half of it. Yeah, we got that one area where it started to pull off. You can see, erg. Matt was the lucky one to check on the project last night. I was busy in the Viking doing some work, but coming back the next day to look at our progress, it looks like our fiberglassing was a success. So now we have our very first part of glassing done. Things are literally coming together. After eight years of the nomadic life involving crossing oceans in a 34 foot saber, refitting an aluminum boat, and then taking that to the Arctic Circle, we're back at it again with a brand new build. This is Matt and I'm Jessica. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and join us every week as we start our newest project of building a 42 foot catamaran from the ground up. Since I am mix master Jazzy Jess, I'm usually the one that gets the perfect measurements out of here, which then either I hand it off to Matt and I'm actually gonna give it to him this time because it's way overhead and he can reach it better than I can. Or later you'll see me doing a lot of this myself. To get the job done, I have my vinyl ester here and because of the temperature that we're working with inside the tent I'm going to be adding 1.75% of the peroxide which is going to give us just a little more time to make sure that we have everything adjusted up there before any of this starts to harden and to make it um, thicker and fill in those gaps we're going to be adding cotton flock and then to give it um, some stiffness and make sure it doesn't drip out I'll be adding a little bit of kaleidosilica which is not one of my cotton cheese jar. be able to tell that the surfaces aren't completely even right now and that's because we needed to get the gap in there to get the filler in. Once it's in on both sides we're going to get braces and then move things along so that as it dries it is level. Bonding together the upward sloping portion of the bridge deck was going to be more difficult than the previous section only because the outward forces of the hole pulling on each section meant they were a little harder to properly align. Matt had found out a few days before that using 2x4s wedged between the ground and the hull could achieve the plum seam we were looking for. Going back to duplicate it now that we'd added our thickened vinyl ester, it would leave us with the smooth and even seam we were looking to achieve. Like right now? No. fingerprints of places it's not supposed to be. Do you want to currently mark your place in the boat? No, not with a handprint of uh, some extra vinyl ester resin. Got a little carried away, I think, and got it on some of the gel coat. 
Unfortunately, we got it a little too warm in here. Uh, we did have the heat cranking. We turned it off actually right before we started doing this, but uh, we did get the temperature a little bit too hot in here and it started to kick faster than what we really wanted. So our 30, 45 minute work uh, time kind of got condensed down to maybe 20, 25, which was not enough. <laughs> we did get everything's aligned the way it's supposed to be. Everything got filled the way it's supposed to be. It's actually, we kind of kept it so it's, it's seeping out a little bit of extra top and bottom. So we overfilled it and then squeezed it back together. And then right before, Right before we end up um, going through and actually fiberglass in this, I'll grind that back down so it's flat then, and then we can glass right over the top of it. But it's better to have it too far out than to uh, than suck back in the crevice there. But uh, yeah, I think it went together okay. Um, the, the alignment looks just the way it's supposed to be, like the way it was from the factory before they actually cut it apart. Um, all the seams are where they they're, um, should be. So I think we're successful. Time will tell once we release this and glass it and to make sure that the other pieces kind of plop into place. But worst case scenario, we're off like an eighth of an inch. I, I thought we were being so smart by putting, we, I had just, right before we did this, we did a dry fit again of this thing before we did it, but, um, I thought I was being so smart and having just put a little extra tape on this over the top of the end of these boards so they're not going to adhere themselves to that area so they'll pop right off. Problem is is that we had all of this done with friction with how all these boards were held into place. That was making it way too slippery. Uh, luckily we had these pre-made little cleats so we were just able to quickly grab some screws, drive that into this area and that holds that board into place just fine so it's not sliding all over. Um, the rest of them all have tape on them too, so again, when those pop off, that won't be a problem. And then we'll just go through and fill those two little holes before we glass it. So simple, easy, and that worked out just, just fine. Um, thankfully, we had those pre-cut. We're back today to continue working on the upturn area of the bridge deck. We have given it a full 24 hours now to let the vinyl ester set inside the cracks here. And just like we were hoping for, it has seeped out both edges. So we know it's completely full. So Matt's job now is to go back and grind it down smooth and then we're going to start glassing it while we still have a nice sunny day with low humidity. Oh, the zippers are going completely. Oh, Matt's going to have to be taped up in his Tyvex. Uh -huh. My one time use Tyvex is truly one time use. Uh, it's like your fourth. I, yeah, I think I did actually get a few uses out of it, but now it is falling apart and the zipper is no more. Nope, that did not work. <laughs> so yes, gorilla tape me, please. My reverse <laughs> race stripe. There's <laughs> nothing that a little bit of gorilla tape can't yeah. spell. It's like a... Uh, <laughs> a uh, negative of a skunk. Thankfully for Matt, his time on the sander today would not involve painstaking hours of removing gel coat, but was just going to be a quick scuff sand to the surface, mostly to remove contaminants and leave texture for the fiberglass to grip onto. Matt is filling just a couple of the seams that we had sitting because there was like little spaces Plus there were the holes of the bricks that he had to drill in to make sure that the boards would hold up. So we're going to do that for, I don't know, 30 minutes and let that cure. And then we will be able to do the fiberglassing on top of it. This job was a continuation of using our 12 ounce double bias cloth. It has fibers running at 45 degree angles, so none of the strength is wasted. Glassing this seam is not alone in what will create the strength to keep our bridge deck together. That will come from a combination of the beam spanning the underside, which we have not yet adhered, as well as bulkheads and furniture, and laying down a strap of unidirectional fiberglass perpendicular to the direction of the seam. The little box that Matt is working on behind me right now may look pretty complicated because of its shape, 
but we're just adhering the fiberglass to the structure that sticks out and then the extra will just hang off and once it dries, it will get cut off. For both of us, we had imagined that working on the underside of the deck where it curved up was going to be a nightmare, but it turned out to be incredibly simple. Once the base layer of vinyl ester had been rolled on, the fiberglass adhered to it like a dream and stayed right within the lines we wanted it to. When we did the under the bridge deck, the real overhead area, of course, didn't drop a single thing on my full Tyvek suit. Today, I'm like, ah, it wasn't that big of a deal. It's mostly on this angle here. And I ended up wearing more resin, I think, than when I actually put on. Uh, it all turned out well, though, so nice and strong. It should be good. It's drying right now. The thing that I realized, we had I previously used a set of like roller trays, disposable trays, so you can spread out the resin. It makes it easier to put, of course, put it on the roller and all that kind of stuff. And I can't find them anywhere. There's a specific type I really like, and I cannot find them. So I hadn't bought any others. And really paid the price for that today. I should have just broken down and bought stupid ones that I don't really like. Uh, because it's so much more difficult than actually having to get it out of that little jug that we use. Um, the mixing cup and try to spread it with a roller. It just doesn't work at all without using an actual roller tray. So I will go and buy some of those until I can find my secret awesome roller trays, the ones that I actually like. Yeah, it turned out good. Um, no air bubbles that I can see, which is always the important part. Squeegeed out all the excess resin. That looks good. This double bias is a 12 ounce double bias that we're using. So 45, 45 degree angle. Um, Nice thing about it without mat, there's no um, chop strand mat on this particular stuff. Uh, it makes it so easy. You wet it out, there's no air bubbles, you can lay it down flat just the first time and use a squeegee basically, you're not even really getting bubbles out because it, it, it just works perfect. It's just getting the excess resin out is all you really have to do. So really simple, we will be switching to a um, 1208, so same 12 ounce again but that has a three quarter of an ounce um, chop strand mat actually on that. Um, so we'll be using that for all the seams. Uh, it's something that most people are more familiar with than just a standard double bias. Um, just for this scenario, it would work best to, to use this. Um, so yeah, you'll see those, you'll see a bunch of other different, we have unidirectional cloth, we have um, 090 bioxyls that we'll be using. So a lot of extra fun stuff. This is the first time using this particular one with vinyl ester, and just it works awesome. Well, that means we have got one project tackled, even if it's a small one, but the bridge deck is one solid piece again, which feels so good. So now that's out of the way, next project we're going to start is bulkheads. Yeah, I need it. Won't you bend them all? 